Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. With the busy Thanksgiving travel season upon us, state leaders hope to send a strong message to drivers about safety. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. I'm Sarah Sanchez. This week is historically one of the deadliest on Connecticut roads, specifically for crashes caused by those run wrong way drivers or drivers who have had too much to drink. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc is in Naugatuck tonight. It hit pretty hard. He was just out of college. We were both at UConn together. It's been 12 years so. since State Representative Seth Bronco lost a friend to a wrong way driver on Route 8. Got on the wrong way, struck him head on. He was in the car with his girlfriend, uh, who was also badly injured. She survived, but um, BJ unfortunately lost his life. BJ, or William Bear Jr., was only 24 years old, a tragedy more and more Connecticut families are facing. 2022 was not only the deadliest year on our roadways uh, in recent history since the 1980s, but it was also the year when wrong way crashes killed 23 individuals more than ever before in our history. A history state leaders are working to change. We're doing what we can with technology, but the other 90% is up to you. The DOT has already installed more than 120 wrong way detection systems at highway ramps across the state. This one here in Naugatuck has already been activated 14 times this year. And all those drivers have safely turned around. Uh, we call that a self-correction. This is the second highest location uh, next to Danbury. DOT Commissioner Garrett Ugolito says of the 195 activations of the state's detection systems this year, about 80% of people self-corrected. When drivers don't, state troopers step in. I am deeply, deeply appreciative of these Connecticut state troopers who will do whatever it takes, including driving directly toward an oncoming vehicle to, again, protect the motoring public. It happened just the other day in Harwinton. Police say a trooper purposefully collided with a wrong way driver to stop them. And again, over the weekend, a Hartford woman was charged as troopers caught up with her after driving the wrong way on I-84 near Manchester, something they'll be looking out for over the next few days. This is probably the most dangerous four days of the year on our Connecticut highways and usually 10 to 20 um, serious injuries, fatalities, many of them alcohol related. All crashes these leaders say are preventable if drivers think twice before getting behind the wheel. Be smart, you know, everybody wants to have a good time, that's fine, but make plans, make arrangements, stay safe and be responsible and help us all stay safe. In Naugatuck, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you to Old Saybrook now, where firefighters rushed to put out a boat fire. The fire produced a heavy amount of smoke as it burned at the Safe Harbor Marina around lunchtime today. Investigators say this boat was stored for the off season when it burst into flames. A fire boat sailing down the Connecticut River responded quickly and crews used a boom to contain any oil spills. Officials say no one was hurt and there was no impact to the environment. Some wild video there. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems finally the forecast has caught up with the calendar. That's what it looks like. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now. Rachel, the rumor's true. We got more rain on the way. Yeah, we have a couple rounds of rain on the way. One for tomorrow morning and then another one that could be more significant heading into Thanksgiving itself. And if you think it feels more like the calendar, wait until you see this time next week feeling a lot more wintry. Here's a look at the radar showing the system heading our way that will bring us some of those showers as we head into tomorrow morning. But right now we're quiet. Temperatures are in the upper 40s for Hartford and New Haven. We are still dry. 39 though in Torrington and I think most of us will be dropping back into the 30s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. And then we'll see that rain develop between around 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. So Maybe a little bit slower for the morning drive, but we are dry by late morning, early afternoon. So that means it is dry for the evening commute tomorrow. So here's another way of looking at that. We've got that rain developing through the morning. It's wet 10, 11, noon. After that, we'll start to dry things out. High temperatures will climb into the low 50s and then we'll see some 
possible bonus late day clearing, depending on where you live. The farther west you live, the better chance you have of seeing that. We're dry heading into tomorrow night and for Wednesday, which is that big travel day leading into Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving itself is looking wet, breezy, and maybe even a few flakes for the higher elevations of northwestern Connecticut. We'll take a look, plus big snow to the north of us coming up. Rachel, thank you. A Fox follow up tonight on a Willimantic family who survived a poisonous gas emergency in their home. Tonight, that family is only speaking to Fox 61's Matt Karen about the mistake that nearly cost them their lives. Carbon monoxide, or CO, it's generated by every combustion appliance. You can't see it, smell it, or taste it, but you can easily detect it. One of these will cost you about 40 bucks, and it could save your life. I had to drag my father outside. A terrifying end to the weekend for a Willimantic family. Jesus Salazar knew something was very wrong when his father and uncle collapsed inside their Gifford Avenue home Sunday afternoon. I passed out, he got back up, passed out again, got back up and passed out a third time. And then I brought him outside. My father, after he, he was using the bathroom after he came out, he sat down and was unresponsive. According to the fire department, the family was baking bread indoors and with this propane fueled commercial oven. The tank wasn't fully connected, so it started leaking gas. They quickly started feeling sick with symptoms that can include headache, dizziness, nausea, chest pain and disorientation. Initially, the call came in as uh, possibly smoke in a home with unresponsive folks and the firefighters got on scene just before noon and found that there was no smoke, but quickly ascertained that there was carbon monoxide. Firefighters discovered the gas reached a toxic saturation of 250 parts per million, and they knew they had to act quickly and opened all the windows and doors. It's a terrible idea to have any sort of combustion that's unvented in the home. Six people were in the home. Three of them became ill and were transported to Wyndham Hospital. From there, two were flown by helicopter to New York, the nearest hospital with a hyperbaric chamber used to increase a patient's blood oxygen level. After intensive oxygen therapy, everyone is back home in recovery. They're doing great, better than before. So whether it's a generator, a turkey fryer, or your home's own heating system, it's important to make sure that it's ventilated and well-maintained as you head into the holiday heating season. When your CO detector goes off, um, a lot of times the natural reaction is to say, well, I don't see anything, I don't smell anything, I don't taste anything, it must be a false alarm. But you can't know that without having the fire department come and run a meter through your house. The Willimantic family told me they learned a valuable lesson not to bring those types of appliances indoors and to make sure they have both smoke and CO detectors installed. Oh, and don't forget to replace your batteries at least once every six months. For the Fox 61 News, I'm Matt Karen. A developing news now. The judge overseeing Donald Trump's election interference case dismissed it after special counsel Jack Smith asked her to toss the case due to a longstanding Justice Department policy barring the prosecution of any sitting president. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has the latest. What many viewed as the most serious case against president-elect Donald Trump is now coming to a close. Nearly four years after the Capitol riot and more than a year after now President-elect Trump was federally indicted for allegedly attempting to subvert the 2020 election, the long legal saga appears to be over. In a filing to the judge, special counsel Jack Smith wrote, quote, this case should be dismissed before the defendant is inaugurated. It made this election the largest effective jury verdict in history uh, by reelecting Donald Trump. Uh, the, the special counsel found himself at odds with his own department's longstanding policy against the prosecution of a sitting president. Trump reacting, saying, quote, I persevered against all odds and won. Smith also asked a judge to dismiss Trump's Florida classified documents case. Both cases were impacted by a recent Supreme Court decision granting sitting presidents broad immunity for official acts made in office. 
Despite the legal precedent, some Democrats are still disappointed with the result. I think it is a shame for justice in this country. It establishes that Donald Trump is above the law. The Supreme Court put him above the law. In his filing, Smith asked for a dismissal without prejudice, which could leave the door open to prosecution when Trump leaves office. The dismissal won't be official until it's approved by the judge. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Caught on camera, Enfield police used a drone to track and find a suspect in the woods. You can see from the video here a shadow at the top of your screen. That's the suspect. But then watch as a dog and two officers run after them. Police say the man went into the woods after a domestic violence incident. Uh, he, uh, that suspect was arrested, but police have not released any other details. Waterbury police are investigating after finding a man dead on Saturday. The body was found outside in a hidden uh, area near the Brass Mill Mall parking lot. Investigators are working with medical examiners to find out how he died. The Department of Consumer Protection wants to hear from you about proposed regulations for marijuana programs. Lawmakers want rules for each program to be more clear, consistent, and cohesive. So you have, if you have something to say, you have until January to submit comments. That link's posted on our website at fox61.com under links. Well, new tonight, landscapers rescue an injured hawk in Wolcott. Take a look. This red-tailed hawk was found on Hampshire Drive this morning. It's extremely sick, we're told, missing a talon and has a head injury. Rehabilitators say the bird likely ate a poisoned mouse. It's now in the care of a place called Hope Bird Sanctuary, and they're helping it recover. Meanwhile, officials say this is why you should use traps instead of poison for your pest control. New developments tonight involving Alex Jones. A judge ordered a new hearing for the sale of Jones's InfoWars platform to satirical website The Onion. Jones accused The Onion of collusion with Sandy Hook families. The judge is trying to find out if The Onion made a valid bid on InfoWars during the recent bankruptcy auction. The presiding judge was supposed to hear an emergency motion today to disqualify the bid from The Onion, but rescheduled a hearing for next month to hear evidence and testimony. Jones filed for bankruptcy after being ordered to pay nearly $1.5 billion in defamation lawsuits by Sandy Hook families.